In the previous episode, we've highlighted the importance of dealing with IP issues while on set to minimize our workload in post-production. Today, we'll tackle those pesky logos and objects that escaped our attention and slipped into the frame. As stock media producers, we should avoid fixing it in post at every cost, but it's valuable to have a few skills available just in case we can save a shot. So before even starting, it's essential to evaluate your problem shot and see if it's even worth the time and if the result is going to be seamless and believable. Remember that if you're in damage control mode and your object removal process will not improve the image, it might be better to just not do it. Consider if the clip has commercial potential or if the camera movement is too jerky and therefore hard to track or if you have another object passing in front of the item you want to remove. These aspects will complicate the removal process with no guarantee that the result will be passable. Analyzing a clip and understanding what we can do versus what we cannot is perhaps the biggest part of the solution. With that in mind, here are a few tools and tricks within Resolve that we could use to remove objects. The easiest way to remove a logo or object is to use a combination of tracking and node sizing by sampling a patch to cover our object. We've demoed this already in our problem clips episode. If you want to check that out, click on the link here. The trick implies that there is nothing passing in front of the object we want to remove, since it will impede with the tracking and the sampled patch we want to cover it with. But still, if you happen to have an obstruction in the way of the object you wish to mask, here is a way to do it. Create a new serial node where you'll draw a power window around the object you want to mask and remove and add a little softness on the inside and outside. Head over to the tracking window and track it until the object is obstructed and the tracker gets confused. Select the keyframes after the timeline position and clear the tracking data. Select the frame mode and drop a keyframe at the current time position. The frame mode will let you readjust the window position on a frame to frame basis and create keyframes. Continue by adjusting the window around your object every frame or so by guessing the position behind the obstruction until it's completely hidden. The tracker will interpolate between the keyframes creating the animation. Switch back to clip mode and move the power window to an unobstructed region nearby from where you will want to select your sample. The tracker's clip mode will apply your changes in relationship to the global tracking data so the moved window will still follow the tracked keyframes path from the position you moved it to. Using the node sizing values, move the patch so it covers your object. Now we'll have to isolate and track the obstruction so it excludes the patch when it passes over. Create a new layer node and using a power window, draw around the obstruction covering enough of the projected patch passage, then track it using the methods we've mentioned earlier. You only need to track the movement of the obstruction while it passes over the patch. The Patch Replacer tool within the OpenFX library list in the paid version Resolve Studio is a simple but very efficient tool to mask IP issues or objects we want to remove. It is actually doing what the title suggests. Replaces a patch and it's similar to the spot removal tool found in Lightroom. The concept resembles the node sizing method but with a few more options. There's a link source and target patch as shown by the connecting arrow. Add a new serial node, title it, then add the patch removal tool from the OpenFX library. Drag the target patch over the part you want to mask and use the four corners to shape the size until you have it all covered. If you want, you can change the patch shape to a rectangle from the region shape. Drag the source patch over the part you want to sample from and adjust it until you get a seamless result. By default, the fill-in method will be set on Blend Clone, which is a more intricate way of masking the target that will work the majority of times. Think of it as the source patch detail being combined with the target texture. The replacement detail slider will adjust the amount of texture. When you need an exact match of the source, switch the fill-in method to Clone. The difference between these two modes is that the Blend Clone creates a composite while the clone creates an exact source replacement. The fast mask option has no source patch but borrows pixels from the neighboring areas forming a quick blend much like the content aware fill in Photoshop. Works well with smaller patches instead of larger ones where a grid pattern can sometimes be visible. You can fine tune the shape margins using the blur edge value. 
The on-screen controls buttons will show or hide the patch controls, for instance, in case you want them off when doing a more precise positioning. Or simply use the Shift plus tilde keyboard shortcut. If the target needs to be tracked, you can do so by using the tracker with the FX option. For a more precise tracking result, select only the specific camera movements happening in the scene from the checkboxes above the tracker window. Next, use the interactive mode where you can manually specify individual high contrast tracker points that resolve should follow nearest to our item to track. If and when an obstruction ruins one of the tracking points, stop the track, enter frame mode, move the playhead to the last good tracked frame, select and clear the ruined track data from that position, then reposition the tracker point crosshair to a new unobstructed feature to track. Now you can continue your tracking. And finally, if you have obstructions, use the same trick we mentioned earlier using a layer node to mask out and exclude the patch from the obstruction as it passes over. Another powerful tool found in Resolve's OpenFX library, available only in the studio version, is the object removal. The results are greatly dependent on the complexity of the movement and type of object we want to mask. Precisely removing objects traveling over a uniform background like the surface of water or a field. The smaller the object, the better the results will be, like for instance, land spots. Create a serial node and isolate the object you want to remove using a power window. Try to make a tight fit around the object, then add some softness. Use the tracker as before to track the power window you've just added. Drag and drop the object removal plugin on the node. If you open the node's contextual menu, you'll notice that the Use OFX Alpha is automatically activated. This will make it possible for the plugin to use the key you've just created with the power window. Click the Scene Analysis button and let it complete. In case, if there's no camera movement, you can click the Assume No Motion checkbox for a more accurate result. If your footage was fitting for the plugin processing, your object will be removed successfully with no artifacting and replaced by a seamless background. But if you notice certain gray patches or fringing, you can adjust the search range value. This adjustment defines the replacement detail that Resolve will look for in frames before and after the current position. In certain situations where the mask is gray in some frames, you can try using the Build Clean Plate function that takes a guess at filling the mask with the background. Use the Adaptive Blend mode for a better background blending if the Linear mode, which is a straightforward clone, doesn't do a good job. It is important to know and experiment what these tools can do, but in the end we shouldn't be spending hours on trying to fix things that should have been taken care of in pre-production. Yet sometimes we all have those moments where we sit down after all is said and done, the footage is downloaded from our cards and we discover stuff that slipped in our frames. Well, I hope this episode will help you save those kind of shots that would have otherwise ended up in the recycling bin. Do you have any questions about removing objects in your video? Leave them in a comment below. But well, thanks for watching and please leave a thumbs up if you like this episode and while you're at it, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when we'll post the next one. See you soon!